Hi there, I'm Ricard and this is Three Secret Strategies for Spiritual Warfare. Welcome to the Deliverance Podcast. If you haven't yet, please help me by subscribing and liking this video if it is beneficial to you. Let's jump straight into today's content. Three Secret Strategies for Spiritual Warfare In order to understand and apply these strategies for spiritual warfare, we must first establish what spiritual warfare is. To my understanding, there are two types of prayers that we can engage in as Christians. Number one is intercessory prayer, as it says in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1. This is prayer that we pray for ourselves many times, our wives and husbands, our mothers or fathers, children, friends and enemies alike. It is when you pray to God for Him to bless, protect, cover, shelter, lead, guide, renew, restore or repair certain situations in people's lives. Spiritual warfare on the other side are prayers that are more on the confrontational level. It is warfare prayers. I engage in spiritual warfare prayers when I minister deliverance, for example, which are clearly different from a general prayer for God to bless someone or for God to bring a solution into a person's life. It is when we begin to wage war against demonic spirits. So the number one secret to spiritual warfare is to stand on scripture. People still don't understand how incredibly powerful the word of God is in prayer. My mentor, the late prophet T.B. Joshua, always said that using the word of God in your prayer helps you ensure that your prayer lines up with God's will and intention for your life. There is the Logos, the written word of God, and then there is the Rema, the spoken word of God, the revelation word of God. Jesus in Matthew 4 spoke the word of God and Satan had to flee. We have been given authority in our voices and in our tongues to declare the word of God over our situation. When engaging in spiritual warfare in your personal life or over your family, for example, speak the word of God. Stand on a particular scripture regarding the situation at hand. There is a Bible verse for every situation under the sun. And if you haven't found the one that pertains to your situation yet, keep looking. The Holy Spirit will reveal to you what this particular scripture you need to stand on is. Ephesians says the word of God is the sword of the spirit. And if you doubt your authority as a believer... Use the word of God because you do not need to doubt the authority of the word. Speaking Bible verses over a situation, over a family member is declaring the promise of God over their situation. Using Bible verses as foundations for prayer points are extremely powerful because the Bible is the word of God. And the word of God does not return void. Every scripture is God breathed. Jesus used it when he was tempted in the desert you should too. An example was for me when I was struggling with lust and was waging war against the spirit of lust in my own life. I would find Bible verses that pertain to my situation. For example, Psalm 119 verse 9. How can a young man stay on the path of purity by living according to your word? Psalm 119 verse 37. Turn my eyes away from worthless things and preserve my life according to your word. 1 John 2.16, for everything in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life comes not from the Father, but from the world. Psalm 19 verse 14, may these words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, Lord, my rock and my redeemer. I would turn these Bible verses into prayer points like this. Lord, help me to live according to your word. Holy Spirit, guide me to stay on the path of purity. Turn away my eyes, Lord, from looking at worthless things and revive me in your word. Help me to resist the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, my Lord and my rock. Manifest your strength in my weakness, Lord, and wash me with your precious blood in Jesus' mighty name. And I would memorize it all and repeat it in my mind until it moved from my mind to my heart and I no longer needed to actively memorize it in my mind but it automatically was running like an engine in my heart 
And that is how you use the Word of God in your prayers. Secret strategy number two, pray with active faith, not passive faith. There's a huge difference between passive and active faith. Passive faith is believing Jesus Christ is Lord. It is believing that Jesus Christ can heal, that he can deliver, believing all these things and that one day he will do it for you. This is all good. It is faith, but it is an inactive faith. It is a passive faith. Instead, let your faith be active. It means that you go from believing that Jesus Christ can do it to believing that Jesus Christ can and will do it today. Prayers of active faith is a prayer of desperation born of faith. You are throwing yourself so far out there that God has to rescue you or else you won't make it. Faith-wise, not physically, of course. Your active faith will instantly attract the Holy Spirit. It is when you can sense a change in the atmosphere, when suddenly the Spirit of God begins to touch people in the same room without anyone laying hands on anyone. It is when the air suddenly is thick and there is a tangible presence of God in the room. How do we achieve active faith? It is our role to activate it as people of God. Normally our faith in its default stage is passive or inactive. It is still faith, but it is not the kind of faith that would move mountains. It is the kind of faith that would take us to heaven. Peter exercised active faith at the beautiful gate when he said, Silver and gold I do not have, but what I have I give you. At that moment something shifted and the power of God started moving freely, instantly healing a cripple. If you have ever been in a room where people's faith gets active, it is as if there is a mighty rushing wind and it's exactly what the Holy Spirit needs to move and break chains, shake the foundations of prison cells and open locked doors. Just like what happened to Paul and Silas in Acts chapter 16. Their faith attracted the God of the suddenly. And secret strategy number three, pray until... Pray until. The Bible talks about the unrighteous judge in Luke 18 and how even though he was an unjust man, he still granted the request of the persistent widow. Prayer could be explained in a single sentence. Persistently reaching after your every right. Never giving up. Never stopping. Relentlessly pursuing what is your birthright and your inheritance. The devil is stubborn and won't give up easily. You also shouldn't give up easily. Most people end up giving up right before their breakthrough would have come. Do not let that be you. Pray until. Until when? Until you have an answer. We pray until the chains are broken. We pray until the family member is saved. We pray until the sickness is healed. We pray until the weakness is overcome. We pray until. The moment you understand what the Bible means that the fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. In James 5 verse 16, you realize the key to answered prayer. The key is to never stop praying until the answer is coming forth. If you follow these three simple but profound secret strategies, I can guarantee you that your spiritual warfare success will go through the roof. Thanks for watching this episode. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe and leave a comment with your feedback. What's your thoughts regarding this topic? Let me know. Until next time, God bless you and stay in faith.